Hi everybody, I'm Nani Spice 110 I've helped a lot of people get onto two wheels by giving them some basic information for when they go and do their tests and things. Uh, I have a playlist called Tips for New Riders, or Motorcycle Tips for New Riders, should we say. If you go to my uh, channel, go to playlists, you'll see it. And there's about 60 videos in there, but it's because it covers everything from what licenses you need, how to pass the tests, uh, what's involved in the tests, what you should look at, bikes, everything you need to know to get you from no bike to a full A bike or anywhere in between is explained within those videos and it's helped a lot of people. So if you want some help with it, check out that playlist. However, in today's video, I'm gonna cover something very basic. And I know to most people, this might seem too basic to explain how to ride a scooter because it's so simple compared to how to ride a geared bike. Uh, not that geared bikes should be, you should be scared of them um, and avoid them. If you want to ride a full size motorcycle in the future, you are going to need to learn to use gears. So just persevere with a manual and learn that. However, if you're just after a scooter to get you around town or something like that, then scooter is a good option. And I do love scooters because they are so easy to ride around locally. I've done videos on this bike recently, which I've got on loan from Lexmoto to do a review on. Um, but yeah, if you want to see why I like them compared to my much larger CC bikes, you'll see. But in this video, we're just going to explain the very basics of what's on a scooter and how to ride one. I think everyone pretty much understands the layout of this bike, you know, wheels, front brake, wheels, back brake, engine somewhere in the middle, got some suspension there, some forks, you sit on the seat, you've got handlebars, you know. <laughs> some scooters will come with a side stand like this one, which is quite handy, uh, and other scooters come with a centre stand, which is like this, and well, the way you use one of these is you basically push it down to the floor, keep the bike straight, press down with all your weight onto that, and it'll just lift up, and now, rather than being on one leg, bent over, or lent over, should we say, it's on two, and it's much more sturdy. You also can start the bike with it on the centre stand, which you can't do that with it on the side stand. You can with manual bikes, because you can have the disengaged out gear, so you don't have to worry about things. But anyway, let's get on. Uh, to, to get off a uh, centre stand, sorry, you can just sit on the bike and roll it forward. Okay, so controls of the bike, very simple. High beam, low beam, indicate left, indicate right, press to cancel. So if you're turning left, you indicate like that, and then you cancel it when you want to stop it. Horn is here, then you've got your hazard lights. Uh, you, this is your run, not run, so this is your kill switch, basically. And here's your start button. Now, this Lexmoto Aura has linked brakes, and lots of bikes will have linked brakes because of a, a change in the Euro laws that required bikes to either have ABS or they could have a linked brake system like this has if you don't want ABS. Linked brakes are cheaper to put on a bike than ABS is, so you tend to see it on cheaper bikes. It's okay. Um, it's actually quite good in th this sort of A to B terminology of a scooter like this, but I personally prefer a separate braking system. So with the linked brakes, when you pull the front brake, and on all motorcycles, the front brake is the right-hand side, you'll get mostly front brake and a little bit of rear brake. With this one, which would normally be a clutch on a geared bike, this is the rear brake, but again, with this, you get rear brake and a little bit of front brake. If this didn't have a linked braking system, that would be front, that would be rear independently. But they cross over, but there's a bias towards which one you grab. Throttle is here, which is just twist and go. That's why these are known as twist and go. And that's all you really need to know. Um, so let's get riding and you'll see. Now, depending on what bike you have, different ignitions and things, different keys, keyless systems, very often you'll need to pull a brake in uh, to start the engine and just press it like that and it will start up. Now, because this is an auto, you can rev this a little bit, but it's gonna start pulling away. And if you just do this, well, then you're just gonna start going, okay? But you can roll backwards. As long as you're not on that throttle, it's basically in neutral. Now, I'm not going to go through highway code and how to pull away and how to ride on the road. I'm just talking about functionally how to get around on a moped, how you move around on them. If you want to know more about how to actually ride, that's something you are going to have to learn. And it depends on your country, uh, how the rules work. But anyway, how to physically ride one. So hands off the brakes, feet down or one foot down. You just slowly take up the throttle and you'll see it will sort of just sit there. A bit more starts to pull away. Once you've got a little bit of speed, the bike will just hold itself up. You don't really have to balance it. You can just let off the throttle as you need to get back on. Try to be smooth with this. Don't, you know, come out of a corner and just jerk on it. Although because it is a scooter, uh, its progression of power is a little bit softer than on a motorcycle, which can be, you know, can be jerky and you can end up stalling the bike using the gears and the clutch. With this, you can't really stall it. I'm just applying a little bit of throttle as needed. 
And this part of it you'll find amazing fun because it's basically like riding a push bike, but you don't have to pedal. Now I haven't needed to brake yet because I haven't needed to slow down that much. I can just let off of the throttle and the bike will slow down a little bit for me. Now I'm shoulder checking here to see who's behind me. Making sure I'm okay. I've indicated out here. <laughs> the irony. The irony. <laughs> Gear is an important thing. Okay, it really is. Okay, so pulling up to a junction here. I'm indicating left to let people know. I've shoulder checked behind me. I'm looking down the road, yada, yada, yada. As I say, I'm not going to go into the great details. Don't trust that person indicating. Check who's behind them. Yeah, see, see, indicated right, then we're left. What more can I tell you? And you just basically, uh, I just told you there, you just roll on the throttle and you, it will find its speed, okay? So you hold it here, it's going to do about 26, 27. You give it a bit more, it's going to go a bit faster, a bit less, it's going to go slower. And that's really why scooters are so easy to ride and why I felt like making this video was a little bit surplus requirements. But what I do realise is that giving someone just a little bit of information before they do their CBT, before they go to do a test, removes so much fear. Uh, and that's always what the idea of my videos has been, to help people understand things better, to remove the fear of the unknown. Uh, yeah, this person is continuing to do dodgy things. Okay, so we're in a 30, so we're doing 30. So now we're going to go from a 30 to a 40, so we can check there's room behind us, everything's okay. Increase the uh, twist on the throttle, go up to 40 miles an hour, and just hold it there. Now I'm coming up to a junction, there's people and stuff, I'm just letting off the throttle. I'm not braking, I haven't actually used the brakes yet. Back on the throttle gently. Don't, like, yank on the throttle. It's not such a problem with scooters, uh, because they won't really jerk, you see? But uh, on a normal bike, if you were to do that, it would be like, nah, nah, and jerk it around. It's what makes these so easy to, to ride. You, you really don't need any skill as, as such. Right, I've got a gap behind me, so a little bit of basics on braking. The front brake has more power for your braking than the rear. The reason for this is that when you get on the front brake, the weight transfers to the front of the bike, which helps push that tyre into the ground, which gives you better grip. The rear wheel, however, when you do when you brake at speed, has no weight forcing onto it and it becomes lighter. So you want to lead with the front brake uh, when you're braking from speed. On a, on a larger CC motorcycle, I tend not to use the rear brake unless I'm doing slow control stuff or mid-corner braking. Uh, but that's different to a scooter. With this, you just want to be doing the right speed. You shouldn't need to be braking mid-corner and you don't want to be braking mid-corner. You want to be at the right speed before the turn. So you basically, you can power into it. If you're going at a slow speed, you can just hold that throttle in the same place. But if you go faster and faster, it's going to make you turn tighter and tighter. So if I need to do an emergency brake or just some decent braking, I'm going to start with the front brake. I'm going to squeeze it progressively. I'm not going to jab at it. I'm not going to just do that. Basically, you start with mostly front and then you lead on to the rear as well. So you go basically like this and they go stop and you just go no lock up, everything's fine, you stopped. That's all you have to do for an emergency stop. It's from about 30. And so you squeeze on the front, mostly the front, and as the front is starting to you know really help slow you down, lead on with a little bit of rear and it will just settle the bike out. Uh, as I say, with a link braking system, it's kind of not quite the same as if it's independent, but I have to try and cover all bases here. Okay, so turning, shoulder checking, indicating obviously. Now I'm off the throttle, slightly on the throttle, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. You see how that was? Okay, let's try that again. So it's clear, indicating off the throttle, a little bit of brake. Let go of the brakes by about here. Look around the corner where you want to go. Slowly progress the throttle on and it'll pull you through. Look where you want to go is a, is a big hint here. It works with all motorcycles. If you look where you want to go, it will really help you. So coming up to this corner, I'm braking a bit just to see if it's all clear both ways. Looking round the corner, just slowly twist the throttle on and we get going. You'll pick it up. It's real easy. You're not having to worry about clutch or gears or anything like that, like people are on, you know, geared bikes. This is this is super simple stuff. 
when it comes to slow control, like U-turns on a scooter, this is actually quite easy, but a little bit different to a normal motorcycle. Uh, so let's do a U-turn here. Now the throttle comes in a little bit unpredictably, okay? So when you're trying to go very slowly, you don't have instant finite control. So what you want to do is have a little bit more revs, but drag the rear brake. So I'll just make sure it's clear behind me to do this. It is. So a little bit of throttle, shoulder check, dragging the rear brake. I can give extra throttle if I need to, only a little bit, and drag that brake, and that gives me the control to do a U-turn. So that is the basics of riding a scooter. It's not difficult, it really isn't. You'll, you'll pick it up very quickly. But I will say this, if you're getting a scooter because you want a geared bike, but you can't pass the CBT without doing it on a scooter, but you're still planning to get a geared bike afterwards, don't do that, what are you thinking? Why are you trying to pass a test on one machine because you can't pass it on the other machine and then think you can suddenly learn to ride that machine on your own? It's a very silly way of doing things. If you want to get a geared bike, pass on a, a CBT on a geared bike. If you can't do that, then you aren't reaching the standard to ride the bike that you want. And I personally don't think it should be legal to do so. However, as I say, this is not a hate against uh, scooters because I actually do really, really very much enjoy riding them. You can even get extra lessons, like an hour's lesson before, so someone can go through gears with you. It will make it much easier. Watch my video on it. I personally come from the perspective of, if you're gonna ride bikes, get a, get a license, get a 125 with gears. But if you want a scooter, well then you can ride one too. There we go. If you found this video interesting or useful, please do hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new here. I'm on way to 100k. And if you want to help support this channel, please consider doing that through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. I would very much appreciate it. Until then, I'll catch you in the next one. Which might still be here. Waiting for a jet ski.